As we continue with our music reading course, there are a lot of little uh, supplemental pieces that are that I'm putting in here, and they'll be progressively numbered. This one is study number three, which is a short little exercise by Mauro Giuliani. Now he was, uh, and it was called, or in the book I found this in many years ago, it was called Cadence, but there are just a lot of these types of pieces. Now Giuliani was one of the early teachers in the early part of the 19th century, died in about 19, 1829 maybe, somewhere around in there, and he was one of the first proponents of playing with three fingers and using using them fairly equally particularly so a lot of his exercises are right hand exercises he's really famous for a lot of right hand exercises you may have seen some of our Hector Garcia videos that have them a little bit more uh, have them have some of them worked out in detail now this piece is a very it's a great example of arpeggios meaning playing one string at a time of a chord so you're usually holding down some notes so the reading of this, it gets pretty easy to memorize this piece, but so I want you to really treat it as a sight reading piece for a while until you've got it memorized, and then as an arpeggio piece. Now the important parts of, uh, technical parts of this are right hand position and left hand position and not moving and being very efficient with your fingers. So I'll play this for you later, but what I'd first like you to do is try playing it before you hear what it sounds like and see if it makes sense and see if you can figure out what the chords are. So pretty much every note is on a different string and you're trying to hold them all down at once. So that is the goal here with, with study number three. The, our Giuliani exercise here. Also, if you notice the page, I've got it written out, it's actually written out twice. The first time through it's written out is as quarter notes and eighth notes in cut time or two two time and we have a tempo marking of andante. Now andante means relatively slowly like about a walking pace. The song is not going to rip rip along, so, but the it, it's going to feel fast if you haven't done much of this before. The second, the bottom part of the page is how Giuliani originally wrote it out, using eighth notes and sixteenth notes rather than quarter notes and eighth notes. These are the exact same thing, so I don't want you to get intimidated by look, by seeing sixteenth notes. It just looks like a lot more ink on the page. So we're looking at it first as eighth notes, but the bottom part of the page is how it would look written out with everything, the, everything all the values of the notes cut in half. Um, in either case, we're going to feel two beats in a measure, and we've got a rhythm of one da 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 quarter, two eighths, da 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 da. And what I'm feeling, what I'm counting, are the half notes. So we're only having counting two beats in the measure: one, two, one, two. So if we if we split those into eighth notes, it would be one and two and one and two and. I mean, sorry, into quarter notes. So the quarter notes we'd be counting as one and two and, four quarter notes in the measure. If we now have eighth notes, we have to use the one E and, a, two E and, a. and so the rhythm of our first little chord there would be one and, a, two E and, a, da, 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 da. That's gonna be a constant rhythm throughout the song. And the rhythm is exactly the same at the bottom of the page, it's just that now these same beats would be quarter notes. One and, a, two E and, a, three and a four E and a. So two measures at the top part are combined into one measure in the bottom and we're seeing it then in four four time where the pace of about 80 beats a minute is quarter notes. In the top part the pace of 80 would be representing half notes. Okay, totally confused? Um, hopefully not, but now uh, we'll take, I'll we'll talk a little bit more with some close-ups here of specifically left hand position and ideas with playing these chords and right hand position with them and then at the end, I'll play through this so you can hear what it sounds like, but in the meantime, you can start practicing it and see how you're doing with your sight reading. We have one more thing in there, and that is in the me in measure 10, we have a sharp. We haven't talked about sharps or flats in the, in the reading music stuff too much yet, but on the, um, we have a G, the sharp sign in front of it, that note means it's going to be, that means it's going to be at the first fret of the G string rather than the open G. Otherwise, all the other notes that you see in there are notes you should already know. And of course a sharp sign put into a measure mean also stays in effect for that whole measure. So we have another G later on in that measure, it's still G sharp. Okay, enough hints. Work on it a little bit on your own. I will break down left and right hand ideas in the next segment and then you can hear it at the end. 
Right hand position and technique is really important as you learn how to read music, but more importantly in, in just classical playing in general. So the important things about your right hand are that you're going to be using three fingers and your thumb, and your thumb has to be further down the strings than your fingers. You can't have your hand like this with your thumb tucked inside. So you're really using the side of your thumb to hit notes and the tips of your fingers, hopefully with nails, to, to pluck the strings. But notice my fingers are almost perpendicular to the strings if I straighten them out and let them, let them go out straight. And my thumb is reaching down, is reaching out, I guess is a better way to think about it, rather than something like this. Hopefully you already have this down, but here is what it sounds like. I've got the metronome set at 60. Two. One E and a two E and a...